Okay, so basically today what I want to talk about is uh, some old speakers that I'm going to try to make mm, better. I've been a speaker nut for, for decades and I love messing with speakers. So I think that, uh, I think a lot of us probably have kind of romantic, mm, let's just call it a sentiment for whatever that sound was that made us so happy back then. And at the time, hey, like my, you know, Sound Dynamics 12 S's, man. I hooked up to a Harman Kardon PM660 amp. I'm just telling you, man. <laughs> to this day, I think, man, that system pounded. The speakers here, um, these are a Jensen CS315. And this is a 15 inch uh, three way speaker. How old it is? No idea. I would probably venture to say 25, 30 years ago, maybe longer. Uh, yeah. So basic, uh, really cheap, cheap, low end uh, speaker, probably built with some general design principles that were around decades ago. Um, I've got a feeling this is probably a golden ratio uh, enclosure. I have not done the math to figure it out, but I'm assuming it was because basically this shape is what you, what you got back then. You know, they, it was always a uh, rectangle, big baffle, uh, bigger drivers, usually on the high end, you were looking at these, you know, bigger 15 inch drivers and then 12 inch drivers and so on and so forth. So as an old timer, and maybe that's it, but I'm an old timer. Um, yeah, I don't see any way to replace big drivers. Uh, they pump out a lot of sound. So I know that you can make smaller speakers that have, that are quite impressive, dynamic, deep bass, etc. I mean, my Energy RC series is a perfect example of that. Um, these things do not have enormous drivers in them, but they're well designed, well built for that era. And uh, whether they would keep up with a big driver system though, I don't know. Kind of depends on that system. Would it knock these things out of the park? I would venture to say yes. <laughs> my, my RC70 towers would probably absolutely crush these uh, 15 inch you know, Jensen CS315s because these things are cheap. It uh, just looks like um, you know, it's, I guess it's MDF, but it's on the light side, you know, not quite flake board, but it's close to it. Oh, well, let me show you the beautiful uh, crossover. First of all, um, yeah, just a bunch, bunch of wires all tied into the, uh, into the uh, positive and negative. And then they've got an electrolytic cap on it. So uh, they've got a, a little bit bigger one there for the mid-range. Yeah, that's the mid-range one. Uh, the mid-range and then the tweeter. Um, yeah, uh, the woofer just got driven directly, so that's pretty hilarious. You got the 15-inch woofer, right? And honestly, this thing is still like new. Just to show you the, the condition of these speakers, I got them for like, um, well, got them for a hundred bucks, no, 80 bucks. And it's clean. I mean, it's like brand new. Anyway, yeah, that was one one uh, you know easy way to get some big SPL is put a large speaker into a large cabinet. Uh, based on some measurements, uh, internal volume I'm thinking is in about the 3.25 cubic foot range on these guys. Long story short, why I wanted a 15-inch three-way system. Okay. We got to back up a little bit. Talking um, 2002, 2004. Um, Starting a little speaker business. Uh, got going with some speaker building. Uh, had some really uh, big uh, plans for it. Essentially, what I wanted to do was bring high quality sound to a more mm, recreational uh, atmosphere. This is why. Okay, go to a wedding especially back then, man, it sounded like absolute crap, right? DJ blaring these big ass speakers that have these horns that just, you know, fry your ears and yeah, terrible sound, right? Uh, tinny, uh, you know, almost no low bottom end or anything. Um, yeah, the commercial sound systems, uh, especially, you know, 30 years ago, but even now a lot of times, uh, how many of you have been to a wedding or been to a bar or whatever and 
even with today's technologies and all of the materials that we have and all the, all the knowledge that's been gained over the years by professional speaker manufacturers, just, man, it's, it's not like sitting in your home listening to something that sounds really good, right? So that was the whole goal. Now, the problem with that, the problem with that is speaker design in general. So this is like a general purpose home speaker, right? Uh, then you've got your your pro drivers, okay, which are much more dramatic. All right, so these are some pros pro drivers, okay? I've got a tweeter around here somewhere too that I could show you, but so the difference is, okay, uh, motor structure, right? This is a little eight inch. Look at the motor structure on this thing, right? I mean, wow, a home speaker shaped like so, and it's for smaller spaces and wide dispersion, right? So the concept I had was to bring that, that sound that you hear in your living room with your nice home speaker to a bigger environment, like a wedding hall, like, uh, like a small uh, club, uh, like, uh, you know, any place a DJ might play, right? Um, or a band, that was my thought. Uh, 2,500 to 4,000 square feet, that was my goal and I wanted audiophile grade sound uh, or as close to it as I could possibly get given the design and I wanted it to reach high SPL. So best results I got was I want to say a frequency range of about 17,000 to maybe probably about 27 to 29 uh, on the low end and that was over in, in that entire space and Within the first 25 feet I measured, I could get about 129 dB. Uh, further out, about 50 feet, that dropped considerably to about 110, you know, somewhere in that area. Um, and then as you got further away, say to the edge of the wall or something, you might be hitting the 90-ish range, which actually is pretty good for that kind of a setting, like a, a banquet, a wedding, um, some type of uh, awards event or whatever the case is, you know, where, you know, those people who like the sound, they're gonna be up front, they're gonna be dancing and everything else. And then people further away, they'd like to talk. And then with the added benefit of the fact that we're using high quality speakers, right? It's not gonna have that blaring, you know, piercing sound that you can't even talk over. So. When I think about PA speakers, especially the older ones, right? They're designed to project sound far. Like I used to coach youth football, right? I mean, yeah, you want to go across the football field, you want PA speakers. So what's the difference? All right. So a PA speaker, by contrast, much bigger magnet, much greater power handling, right? And this is a cheap one. This is maybe a $30 Pro Woofer from Dayton. So. I mean, it's a mid-bass driver, and um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think this thing handles like 200 watts RMF. But yeah, the cones on these are paper. I love them. They're so stiff. That surround, that folded cloth surround, these things are tight. I mean, these these are really tight. So, you know, and they're, they're high sensitivity speaker too. So the focus is on really moving a lot of sound waves far with these speakers and to do that you need the power right so that's what these are made for do they sound great in home audio mm, arguably and i say arguably because this is a pro series really cheap like 25 dollar uh, pro series mid bass driver from dayton little guy again designed the same way as the bigger one i showed you enormous motor structure five inch driver and it's it's a solid little thing and it's got a decent frequency range so it goes pretty low and it gets pretty high yeah so anyway that's the idea put this guy in this cabinet okay now the old mid-range so yeah so my thought process is to replace this driver with this little beast okay resonance unbelievable
Yeah. Um, so crazy, crazy resonance in these guys. They've got to be braced. Um, so I did get some wood. Uh, show you what I got. Just Home Depot. This stuff is uh, actually sold where they sell the trim. This is like trim stuff. So it's, it's planed. Um, that way you're not dealing with, you know, a bunch of warped wood or something. So this is already nice and straight and flat. These pieces are, I think, three quarter by two and a half. And then I got this piece of quarter inch thick by five and a half inch. Uh, this is poplar, by the way. You can get in, because it's trim, right? You can get in the different, um, the different types of wood. So anyway, I got poplar because I know it's pretty, it's not pine, it's a little better than pine. Um, it's light and not incredibly hard. So I'll be able to saw it and stuff. I, I have a uh, miter box saw I'm gonna use for that. So thought process being, my little mid base driver that I showed you needs about 0.07 to 0.09. 0.07, I believe, is what they recommend for a sealed cabinet. 0.07 cubic feet. That's small, right? And it's not a whole lot bigger for vented, but it's not that small. So with these pieces, what I can do is make my own little cabinet. It's got a dual purpose, is I'm gonna build that into this area here. So it's gonna serve two, two purposes. It's gonna stop a lot of resonance on the sides and on the front panel while giving me a sealed space for the mid. All I really need is a little hole in the back for the wires. Inside will be insulation, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, you've got a bunch of sticks like this out in the garage and a couple of these. So maybe 10 bucks in wood. For bracing it, what I'm gonna do, is these same poplar pieces. So I'm gonna try to find strategic places within the cabinet to brace the cabinet. And now I can just be as simple as say, running one from the front to the back, like that, cutting it off right below that little midwoofer enclosure I'm gonna make which is exactly how they did it back in the 80s. Like, literally, like every speaker you saw like this would have one of these, or most speakers did, right? Because that's a really sensitive area. It's smack dab in the middle, you know, your driver, woofer driver is usually gonna be somewhere in this area, so you got this little web of material, horrible. So yeah, probably for, for sure, even what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna run one to the back like that. Then, the other thing you'll see is going from side to side. So somewhere, not smack dab in the middle, you know, centered on either way, but maybe more like, so picture on the side, I've already got this one going across something like, it'll be in here, right? Okay, so that's gonna help on the back a little bit. And then, for this resonance on the side, which is the longest portion of the speaker cabinet, and aside from probably the back, the sides is probably the most important. Why? Thinner. The baffle is holding all the drivers. It's pretty, it's gonna be weighted down already. Um, and then with a little brace, it's gonna be pretty solid, so I'm not too worried about that. But I don't wanna be right in the middle. I think that the smaller the area, okay, the higher the resonance becomes. At low frequencies, like woofer, right, it's gonna it's gonna start to vibrate. Even if you can't see it or feel it, it'll vibrate, and cause it some sound. It's called resonance, kind of like a guitar. Uh, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna strategically brace this thing. I know I'm gonna have probably one that's somewhere in here, probably coming right off of the center brace that I have that create like a kind of a cross inside. So what got me started on this whole weird project, right? I'm going to show you. Be right back. What we have here, a couple leftover speakers I have from my speaker building days. Dayton Series 2. They, they designed, developed this big 15-inch 
woofer for <laughs> whatever reason, um, whatever the application was, I found it to be absolutely perfect for what I needed, which was my high power home audio idea. Right? Yeah, speaker boy. Um, that was the name that I was selling speakers under. And this was my logo because my son at the time, he had drawn a little stick figure, kind of looked like this. And so I thought it was so cute and simple that I decided to adopt it for my logo. Yeah, so anyway, this, this driver here, you can tell it's a whole bunch different from that Jensen driver. It's not as cone shaped, the flare of the cone is not as drastic. It's made of a much thicker material. Might not be a whole lot thicker, but it's definitely stiffer and it's coated. Okay. This has got an enormous, well, for its day and age, it had an enormous voice coil. I want to say it's a two and a half inch voice coil, maybe something like that. It, it goes, it runs at 300 watts RMS and with a max of like 600, um, with an, a max, I think this thing has an X max of close to eight, 10, maybe something like that. So this was essentially, it's vented, vented pole piece. This was, um, you know, basically a pro driver, uh, kind of married to a home hi-fi, uh, design kind of a hybrid, but yeah, that was the whole thing. Looking for cabinets that I could repurpose these old speakers in. So I was on the hunt for a 15 inch cabinet. I wanted a clean design with standard size holes so I could pretty much, you know, uh, just plug and play drivers, uh, not have to worry about trying to make a square, you know, a square speaker recess uh, or something like that. It's just flush, right? So I can, I can do anything I need to with it. Like chamfer down the edge a little bit to get that, this guy, this chubby mid-range in there. Um, this woofer happens to fit in there absolutely perfect. <clears throat> now, when I was building those speakers I mentioned, that one is a much different crossover than I'm gonna use in this. Um, and much different mid-range and uh, a high frequency driver but coupled with this driver in a what did i use for those uh i used three quarter inch high density uh fiber boards or wherever they are today if, if there's a few uh speaker boy speaker owners out there let me know how they're doing if they're even holding up um, but yeah the very powerful speakers it's not a subwoofer right you would think that a speaker this large would just be like you know like for home theater but it's not it's it's a tight tight speaker that will put out the range of sound that is from your deepest bass to any voices right um it's not going to cover the full range of the voice but it's going to get into a lot of your instruments stringed instruments uh you know trombones trumpets uh male voices uh, deep female voices, the lower end of female voices, is going to be pumping out of this guy, okay? That's a lot of sound, a lot of sound. So that's why this is so important. That's why I'm a big, big supporter and proponent of there's no replacement for displacement, you know? Yeah, we see all these fancy cabinets, right? And they got a speaker that small, except it's a woofer. And they say, oh yeah, this, uh, you know, this thing is good to 50 hertz, right? And maybe it is. You know, I got some upstairs, little drivers, not quite that small, but you know, my energies, I'll go down to like 60 Hertz and pretty deep and, you know, pretty impactful, but not impactful like a speaker like this. Okay. A speaker like this, it hits you, man. You feel it. The so, simplest, easiest way from zero to hero is big drivers, big drivers in a big cabinet that cover a wide frequency range that's got a fairly decent frequency response and that you can tailor to your liking or applications. These I'm gonna be using in the house. Um, the, the speakers that I had mentioned that I was building <clears throat> back in the day with these drivers, um, I had was working them out to have about a 40 hertz punch 
So really, really at that level where most of your hard hitting low bases, that's where I wanted those to perform the best in. And they did. Um, this one here, I don't really necessarily need that. I need to go a little bit lower into the 30 hertz range uh, with a roll off that gives me some of the rumbly stuff. High end should be just a little bright, but still smooth, right? Mid range should just fill in the gap um, at a decent level. But see, mid ranges will have a tendency to always sound a little bit louder. Don't ask me why. Really important, again, to get this guy right and that guy right. Anyway, that's about it for now. So, um, this was my introduction and show you what's going on. And uh, I got real lucky with these. Uh, grills are still in decent shape. But they are cheap, man. These things, right now, that thing would vibrate against here. Oh, yeah. That's going to sound lovely. No, that's something I got to say. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Um, subscribe so that you know when the next video comes out. When it's done, we should have a fully functional set of old three-way speakers that pound. Thank you.